Well, since you're one of my best supporters and not to mention I also really like this idea, I'm glad you asked. Let's do it. I remember earlier in the beginning when Street Fighter 6 was just revealed and information was coming out and all these little trailers and such, and I remember one of the most air quotes controversial things about the game at the time was the fact that the music was apparently not good. I didn't look into this all that much, whether a bigger or a smaller content creator talked about it. I really didn't look on Twitter for it because I hate that site and I'm not really on Twitter like that. All in all, the big reason why I didn't look into this, and maybe I'm just being mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I felt the hate for the Street Fighter 6 music is just fueled by more nostalgia worship, which I am so done with. I would do a mini rant about these salty, bitter ass old heads, but I'm not going to. We're gonna kick back, we're gonna listen to some music, the character themes in particular, and we're gonna have a good time. You see the tier list right here, I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain how these work, there's about 927,628,944 of them on the web, I think you know what this is. Now for the record, I will admit that I'm actually well acquainted with three of these tracks, and you'll know as we get there, but enough jabbering, let's start. First track, reuse theme. Viator, which I think means wanderer. Oh, I remember this. I slightly listened to this when the whole controversy about Street Fighter 6's music not being good was out there. I like how funky this is. All the years that I played Street Fighter and any other fighting game that Ryu was in, I never thought this dude would be having funky sounding theme songs. I mean, even his theme song in Street Fighter V, that was kind of, you know, kind of cinematic. I will say this though, if you just played me this and didn't tell me where it came from, I think... <laughs> theme song of Ryu would probably be one of the last things I would ever guess. <laughs> I appreciate since I've heard like three different little like movements with like Ooh, I like that. What I was going to basically say was I like how this actually seems like a full on track rather than just background music that's just looped and looped and looped. Like of course it's repeating itself, but I hear different riffs. Got me thinking about old freaking kung fu movies too. At least that one little sample. I like this part. Dun, dun. Oh, that last part. Like this is like really freaking... <laughs> This is like a chaotic mishmash of like very traditional and like modern, I like it. Which is very interesting because that's kind of what Street Fighter 6 is. It's another bridging of the gap between the new and the old, you know what I'm saying? The traditional and the new age. Okay, so I actually remember that song. Like I never listened to it all the way through. But I do remember, I think that was one of the songs that people were pointing the finger at when it came to Street Fighter 6's music doesn't sound good because I guess people said that that didn't sound like a Ryu theme song, which, like I said, if you didn't catch it while the music was playing, if you literally just played me that song and didn't tell me where it came from, like literally just played it for me, I wouldn't guess the theme of Street Fighter's freaking Ryu. I wouldn't think of that, but I actually like that song a whole bunch. And I mean, it is out of the box, I'll give it that, but I don't think it's horrible. I do like it more than most of the other Ryu theme songs I've heard. Like, when it comes to Ryu's themes and a lot of the fighting games that he's appeared in, like within the past like couple decades or whatnot, his theme in UMVC3 is by far one of my least favorite. Like, it's got no bite, and it sounds kind of dinky, I want to say. <laughs> His Street Fighter V theme was pretty good, and this one right here is actually pretty good. I'll give it, give it a great. So far, so sweet. 
Next song, Lukey Boy, Taking Aim. This is one of the three themes that I'm actually familiar with because I don't know if I've mentioned it, but oh, Lukey Boy is actually growing on me even more than when I first saw him. For those of you that don't know, when they debuted him in Street Fighter V, I was not really a fan of his design in that game. His alternates in there were actually a lot more better. I really wish they would have made those as default, but you know, hey, it is what it is. But I really, really dug his playstyle. His playstyle was actually really good, but I remember this thing. We're going to play it anyways, because like I said, I played Luke a whole bunch in like the last beta. He's actually pretty fun, and I can't believe I'm actually liking a Shoto clone character like Luke. I didn't think I would like Luke. That opening riff kind of confused me when I first heard it. But then once it starts to get into, like, this right here, I'm like, okay, I see what they're getting at. Cause it kind of seemed like the beat was tripping over itself in the beginning. Ever since reuse theme, I have not stopped moving, man. Even though with this theme right here, I'm just kind of nodding my head. My favorite part's coming up. You'll know it. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I like that riff. I don't know why. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds kind of goofy, but it sounds kind of sleek, man. See the little breaks. They kind of throw me off, but like still, I don't hate the song. Maybe it's just me being out of step. For the record, I still like Street Fighter 6 Luke's design more than Street Fighter 5 Luke. I'm sorry, Street Fighter 5 Luke looked like a homeless dude. Okay. I like that riff, but I liked it better like in the opening movement than this one, but this is not bad. I randomly re <laughs> I randomly just remembered that doesn't Luke like do like <laughs> Yo, I just remembered randomly, doesn't Luke like do a dance when he gets a perfect in Street Fighter 6? <laughs> this freaking guy, I don't know why I like... <laughs> so again, man, the riff. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> I don't know why this infectious bad. Do -do 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 -do. Oh my god. But overall, that wasn't bad. I liked it. I don't think I liked it as much as Ryu's theme. I'll give it a good. Oh! Next song, Chun-Li's theme, Not a Little Girl. Ah, I remember this. Wasn't this one kind of popular in the beginning? Because I like this riff. Like this little kind of, it's kind of leaning into dream trance a little bit. And freaking vocal samples, that moaning. The little main riff of this song makes me think of somebody like just kind of skipping through like a town, like an actual little girl just skipping through town. I really like the dreamier, like kind of chill electro elements this has to it. I like chill music, so chill hop, chill electro, chill step, all the stuff. Maybe it's because I've spent so many years hearing like freaking high energy music, but like, I'm not saying this doesn't fit, but I don't know. Like I imagine this is what menu music would sound like. I wouldn't like imagine it would be like in a match, but hey, it's gonna happen if you're fighting against Chun-Li. Record scratches. That vocal, that little moaning sample right there is always going to get to me. Or that breathing, I guess. Yeah, this is borderline chill step now that I think about it. Or at least I kind of rolled into that. Yeah, like the intro, like the main riff there was actually my favorite part. 
I actually give him credit for like throwing something in a little bit more chill into fighting games, honestly, since I mentioned it like a little bit while the song was playing, like so used to like fighting games having like heavy metal or like very high energy hip hop or like just high energy music period, which I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just I'm so used to that, that hearing a track like Chun-Li's theme might be Breath of Fresh Air, which is kind of funny because that's one way <laughs> that's a very airy sounding song, especially in the beginning. China Vox will always be my favorite Chun-Li theme, but was that bad? Nah, it's a good. Oops. Next track, Mr. Top Player, Jamie's theme. Uh-oh, more funky stuff. More funky stuff. Okay, I think this has been played through like several different like trailers or whatnot. I can almost envision like there's been scenes they showed us. Like I could imagine there are like scenes that they've showed us where someone's walking through like a town and they're playing this song. Or maybe this is just me just envisioning it. Me putting the song to an image. This definitely fits the showman himself right here, Jamie. That man is charismatic. Freaking love his um his little intro walk in like before the match happens. I like that much. This man's like trying to get the crowd all hype and everything. I like that. Oh, these horns though. I like that string riff in the back there. <laughs> the freaking horns, man, it's so awesome. I really just spent the last portion of that song just bouncing around and vibing to it, honestly. One thing I will say about these songs so far is that I'm really liking the funk elements here. I'm really liking that. I'm a huge fan of funk, like old school funk, funk rock, funk metal. Oh yeah, so much. Very funny mentioning funk because I know one of these other themes is definitely gonna be a different little shade of funky. We will get to that. But yeah, overall, Jamie's theme, I enjoyed it. Very much befitting of the character, very lively and very much attention grabbing like he is, seeing how charismatic he is or whatnot. Yeah, I like that. It's a good. Oops! Next track, Sharpen Sonic, Guile's theme. I like that title. Harmonicas. Got some horns. I wonder if they're gonna like use the freaking Guile theme somewhere in here. Like that little riff right there. <laughs> These little riffs in the middle are actually my favorite parts of this so far. I'm guessing they're not gonna use it, which I mean, I know for some people that's probably a sin that they don't use. Do, 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 do. I could be wrong though, hold up. I don't want to talk over it, possibly. Hmm. Uh oh, breakdown. What we got? Hmm. It's an interesting little movement there. So unless I talked over it, from what I could gauge there, they didn't even like have a sample or like even do like an interpolation of the original Guile theme, which again, that's not, that didn't doom this song for me. I mean, hey, if freaking, <laughs> 
I didn't hear like the familiar riffs that we're so used to when it comes to Ryu and Chun-Li's theme, so I mean, of course, he would get a rework as well. Um, that one was by far the least favorite song that I've heard so far over here. Like, it didn't really do much for me. I can probably see that maybe it's trying to be a reflection of Guile being kind of like very, I guess, very chill, very serious, and very mellow, but like, aside from a couple of riffs that you know, we're pretty cool or whatnot. That wasn't really anything special to me. It's a meh. I don't know. Next song, Ninja Star Pop, Kimmy Kim. I remember this actually. <laughs> Maybe it's more than three themes. I remember this one, cause I played her a whole bunch in the beta. Ninja Star Pop literally sounds like a one of, <laughs> it literally, for the record, not the name of the song, but like, Ninja Star Pop, like, just in and of itself sounds like a genre that got literally invented online, like, maybe within the past couple years or something. <laughs> like, have you ever heard of Viking Metal? Like, that's what I thought about, but... Because I know Kimberly's, like, nickname or title is the Ninja Star. After playing Kimberly so much in the beta and now actually listening to this song, like, actually just listening straight to it, very much fits her. I know Kimberly, I think, is a fan of 80s stuff, so I was expecting maybe that would also reflect in the theme. Because this does sound like very modern, but I mean, it's alright. For some reason, it's making me think of like a Nickelodeon show. I can't think of which one. And no, I'm not just saying that because of the paint and the splatter and everything. And it's not like it's a bad thing. Nickelodeon, like again, that was my childhood. Uh-oh. Oh, what's this? Oh, I forgot. I kept wanting to say it, but I kept like vibing so much or I kept stammering or whatnot, but I forgot. One thing I also like about these themes is the fact that they kind of have the whole like um killer instinct thing going on where it's like when you get to a certain portion of the match you get like a certain version of the song or like a different like movement or a part of the song i actually really appreciate a whole bunch i had just thought about that oh what the world mm, a little too much going on there for me there we go. The second half of this is sleek, man. Ooh, this part. <laughs> that part of this sounds a little funny to me. Ooh, I like that bass riff. The bass line. So again, like I mentioned before, I actually played a lot of Kimberly in the second beta. So I've heard this song a healthy number of times, but I don't really remember or recall like the freaking second half of that, which I think is even better than like the first half. I like how it actually went from kind of being bright and cheery to then it got a little bit serious without losing like the happy vibes or whatnot. It's a very fitting song for Kimberly, even though, like I said, I thought that she was going to have something more 80s sounding because I know that's what she's into. But yeah, that's actually a pretty, pretty good song. Put it in the great section. <laughs> Next song, Jury's Theme, Arachnid. Arachnid. Why did I think that? <laughs> the freaking asterisk after the freaking D made me think they were centering something. <laughs> oh God, Jury's Theme, Arachnid, let's go. Big ups to Zelina Vega again. Love Zelina. Aw, oh, this mess is gnarly. Oh, 
Oh my god! This mixture of like cinematic dubstep freaking for like a creepy scene or something, which would definitely befit a freaking arachnid, a spider. <laughs> Oh shoot. Every time I hear like a jury theme or lice, <laughs> anytime I hear a jury theme and like there's scratching involved, I get a little bit scared. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Ooh, this beat, man. Somebody out there has to have a bass boosted version of this. This mess would be hidden with that. Oh my God. The random percussion hits right there, which almost, at least for me, it kind of gives off this freaking feeling of like somebody being cuckoo or whatever, like being unstable. That right there, it's, <laughs> I envision like that's for somebody who's off their rocker or whatnot, yo. How many different freaking movements are in this, man? Maybe I've just been a little like kind of vibing a little too hard to this or rocking too hard to this or whatnot. Hey, yo, how many freaking different movements are there? Like, I feel like I've heard at least maybe four different ones. Not saying that's a bad thing, but it's just like, yo. Ah, I like that little touch at the end there. I like that. You know, I really wonder why they wouldn't. I mean, I understand, like, you know, I guess certain companies, I mean, they control however much is used when it comes to cross promotion, but. I really would have liked it if they would have had Zelina Vega enter the Royal Rumble with that theme song. And it's very funny because the theme that they played for her at the Royal Rumble, which is the theme of Legado del Fantasma, which is a group, the stable that she's part of, and their theme is called Soul March, which actually sounds pretty good itself. I would play it here, but I'm not running the risk of that. <laughs> Y'all should know how WWE is then. Y'all know what happened to Roof, but... I don't think I need to say much of anything else. Like, that was killer. Like, it was a befitting song for someone like Jury. It's <laughs> it's almost like a mishmash of all of her previous theme songs, but then they added a little bit of extra, and now it's just boom, because I can hear, like, kind of the horrifying, dramatic, dark elements from her first theme song. Of course, as I mentioned as it was playing, whenever I hear scratches in a Jury theme song, I panic because most of her theme song from Street Fighter V was based on like very weak, minimalist techno scratches or whatnot. And then of course, like I said, they put some elements in there where they're really given the idea that this is the theme of somebody that is sadistic. I think by how I'm talking, you know where this is going, up here. Next track, Ken's theme, Spirit of the Flame. Ooh, the title. Okay, I've heard this several times. There are these songs that I've heard before, but like I'm not really like attaching the songs to characters or to faces or whatever, but yeah. Cause I would have assumed this was someone else's, but then again, I've only heard samples of this song. Seeing the mess that he's been through, I'd imagine he would have had something a little more darker, but hey, maybe it's coming. That riff is giving me freaking 80s synth wave vibes. Or like 80s new wave vibes. You know what? Maybe it's also the fact that I really liked his freaking Street Fighter V theme. I figure like, maybe this is a little too light for him, honestly. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad song, it's just that I probably wouldn't associate this with Ken. And it's actually really chill compared to some of the other songs. I like that riff there. I like that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is this it? Ooh, okay. I 
All right. Yeah, I like that part right there. That's probably my favorite part of the whole song. Again, I really just feel like I'm still, <laughs> still just kind of feeling like the awesome, just really good, exuberant guitar riffs from this Street Fighter V theme, because this Street Fighter V theme is really freaking good. That was actually not that bad, especially, like I said, that one part where it kind of got a little bit serious there. It's my favorite part. But it's still a decent song. I just expected seeing what Ken has basically been going through. I would imagine it'd be something a little bit more, maybe slightly moody, a little bit darker, but that wasn't bad. It's a good. Us! Extract Blanca's theme. Is it Zilra Zilra? Zilra Zilra? All I know is, is that I'm familiar with this one right here because Shuichi, Thank you as always for being just an awesome supporter of the channel there actually educated me about brazilian funk and when he actually told me about this genre when i first heard blanca's theme i went to actually listen to some examples like some tracks and i could definitely see the influence there i could definitely see it ah the horns are gonna be nuts on here And for the record, I can't stand this character. The one great thing about me fighting against and seeing this freaking character again is just because if the setting is there, I can actually jam to this while I'm beating on Blanca or whether I'm getting beat by Blanca. Ooh, that is really, that's... <laughs> That is, mmm, that rip, I love it, man. This is catchy. Uh-oh, we got, ooh, I like this breakdown. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, what the hell? I'm guessing this is like last round, final round. I wasn't expecting it to get cinematic like that. That freaking sample of whoever that is over in the back just kind of like, it's like really like, is Blanco on the track now? <laughs> It's so catchy, but it's also so silly, man. Man, I'm looking forward to somebody doing like a dance routine to this right here. And... Oh my God, I am stuck in this weird place. Like how in the world is it that literally one of my least favorite Street Fighter characters and probably one of my least favorite all time fighting game characters has a really, 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 really good freaking song, man. That right there just made my day. That's how crazy it is. This song made my day. I don't know, there's just something about it. It's like freaking bouncy and just catchy, funky and everything. And it also has a silliness there. Whatever that freaking sample in the back, it was like, I guess an animal kind of like just bleeding or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have... <laughs> I have nothing else to say, man. It's a banger. Put it up there. It's a banger. Congratulations, Block. You're on the bottom of my hype tier list, but you're at the top of my freaking theme song tier list. Next track, Dalsim Theme, The Great Sunlight. These titles, man. Okay. Kind of what I would expect a character like Dalsum to have. It's getting a little bit dancey though. 
A little riff in the back. Very steady, very peaceful. I like it. Man. You know it's hitting on something else when freaking Dalsim has freaking a danceable track. A danceable theme song. Uh-oh, breakdown. Oh. <laughs> no riff. Oh, this part. Mm. Mm. I like when like these really like danceable tracks actually get a little serious. It's like I'm imagining like just a whole bunch of people like dancing around and having a good time and all of a sudden like I guess somebody's crashing the party. Dun 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 <laughs> Again, another character that I'm not really that crazy for, but actually has a really good theme. I like the vibe of it, but I couldn't put it like down here because Guile's theme I just really was not feeling, so I guess over here would be good for that. Song. It's a good song. Next track, Edmund Honda's theme, Kumadori. Kind of what I would expect. Like that little whistling riff there. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> really? Got a little bit of dubstep in it too. Freaking funky sumo tori music. Like as those, as that, <laughs> I'm imagining him like just hitting like with the palms every time that happens. Doo doo. I know it's a hundred hand slap. Well, matter of fact, there you go right there, the little freaking break. There you go. This is very fun. It's a very fun song. Still got the traditional instruments in there. I like that. Once again, bridging the gap between the old and the new, the traditional and the new age. I'm imagining that freaking level three super he has where he just pushes you over the fire right now. I like how kind of chilled and like it's a little bit chill, but it's also very serious. I like that. Oh, snap celebration. Like this part seems very celebratory. With that snare hitting every time I'm just imagining just sumo seven. Dun 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 dun. That was a really fun song right there. Again, another character that I really don't care for in of themselves in, but he has a very fun theme song. And again, almost every single snare hit, I'm just imagining like a, <laughs> just imagining sumo slaps, man. Pretty good there. I'll put Honda in the good section. Eh, right about here. Us! Next track, Marisa's theme, Pancration. This is the other song I'm very familiar with. I literally, jam this when I go out to jogging. It's the very first song that I play when I go out jogging. I just feel like jamming out to it right now because why not? Because I'm pretty sure you know where this is going to go. This mess just slams so hard, man. And it's like... <laughs> the horns are going crazy, too. All these freaking really good horns on these Street Fighter 6 strikes. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up, wait. 
Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Am I the only person that thought of that whenever I heard that riff? <laughs> Rest in peace, DMX. I love like kind of mellows out right there and then somehow it just chains back into the heat. Like I get from this right here where it's like, oh, like from the little chilled out part right there, I just imagine that's kind of what will play, you know, when things are getting tough and like, you know, that moment where like both of the combatants are kind of resting, trying to like, you know, in neutral, trying to feel each other out. Like that's what I'd imagine with that little chilled out riff right there. And then it gets back into just slamming with the freaking. Mm, 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 mm. Like, I could imagine somebody like in UFC walking out to this. And this part absolutely sounds like somebody's like being cornered, like when stuff is really getting like to the real nitty gritty of the battle. And I literally worked up a sweat just bopping around to that, man. This character, that theme song, man. Oh my god! Uh, do I even need to say anymore? Do I really need to? Do I really? Of course I don't. Ooh, next up, Manon's theme, Walk With Grace. This right here is perfectly placed after literally working up a sweat and just bopping around and getting crazy to Maurice's theme. Now we're getting some really chill, chill, chill stuff, yeah. <laughs> that, okay. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. I gotta hear it again. Hold up. Like this beat too, this riff. <laughs> I like that. Well, we know old Manon here is a model and this is definitely giving off runway vibes. She walking with Grace all right. I'm still scared to death to freaking fight this character, man. I really feel like Manon is gonna be the day one problem of Street Fighter VI, man. Like right now I'm picturing her like literally being like right there at the end of the runway and like this is where everybody's just taking the pictures and everybody's freaking ooh and like everybody's freaking passing out and like everybody wants my no like that's what I'm imagining with this part. I just realized if she turned her head this way she'd basically be hitting the dab. Rocket to this freaking chilled out, freaking fancy, bougie model music, man. Yo! I'm still scared to death of you, but it, it, oh my god. This is too good, man. Mano walking through town, people like freaking going into the limo and they won't just back off. Man, they're killing it with these little freaking chilled out tech, these freaking piano riffs, man.
Not only is her theme song super chill, and like I mentioned earlier, I really am a sucker for chill music, whether it's down tempo, chill out, chill hop, chill step, all types of chilled out music, because that's usually what I like to listen to whenever I'm like having a long work day. That right there in new age music. But the fact that I'm over here envisioning different scenes of Manal doing stuff, like I said, walking down the runway and then like that one riff of the song was like what I'd imagine be playing when everyone's taking the pictures and then she's rolling through the limo in town and people won't leave her alone. Like apparently like that freaking song tells a story to me, but all of that right there, it's up here. I'll put it right up there. It's a banger. <laughs> Next track, DJ's theme. All right! Kinda what I would expect. Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on. Didn't this play like in his trailer like from the Game Awards? Mmm, that's basically it. Hold up, wait a minute. There it is. Okay. Okay, I thought so. I thought so. I thought so. I'm gonna definitely have the image of all them people over there dancing now. This whole track is just basically a vibe, man. But what more would I expect from freaking DJ? What more could you expect? Now I'm frightened to fight DJ then, cause like with this song playing, I feel like I'm gonna be bopping around and not focusing on the match. I will say this, this one's like the most consistent song far as like the same movement there. I mean, that beat never gets old. He's throwing a little something in here left and right, but you know. Like, I appreciate it's trying not to be too crazy, but at the same time, that mess, like, really, at least for me, it really gets into you, the freaking beat. Ah, there it is! Yeah, there we go. Okay, a little switch up. I guess late game, late match, final round. Oh, I like this. Yeah, DJ's theme was just like a whole vibe, but then Got a nice surprise at the end because the opening riff that I liked from the pre-order trailer actually popped up. I was actually glad about that because I thought it was going to be something that was just exclusive to the trailer, but I'm glad it's actually in the song. Whole thing's a pretty cool vibe. Like I said, it's going to be tough not wanting to kind of bop around and move around with that playing <laughs> in the middle of a match, honestly. Especially seeing DJ's looking like he's going to be pretty, pretty strong in Street Fighter 6. I'm feeling it good. Right what? There. I'll even put it like above Chun-Li's theme. Matter of fact, put it right there. There we go. Next track, JP's theme, The Plunderer. Oh, we got a little, something a little more serious here. Horns, man. The freaking horns in the soundtrack, man. Ooh. Ooh. Whew. Man, those are the horns right there. That's the sound of danger coming, man. Something I would imagine JP would have. It's dark, it's noble, and it's signifying danger coming. A little screeching, whatever the heck that is. 
What is that screeching noise? And this sounds menacing, yo. Final boss music. Uh oh. Getting a little symphonic here, are we? Uh oh. Ooh, wow. The moment I say getting a little symphonic, we get smack with the dubstep riff. <laughs> Oh, this is definitely getting serious right here. Ooh. Oh, that's the end? Oh, I thought it was about to be in like another. <laughs> it's some super dark, haunting, high intense, freaking cinematic final boss music. What I would expect from JP. Because now I thought about it, I was wondering what he was. <laughs> I was wondering what type of theme song JP would have because I was expecting he might actually break the mold and might have something like a lot more like symphonic. Like I'm thinking about something along the lines of Wolfgang Krauser's themes, like which were pretty much classical music in the public domain. But yeah, that was pretty dope right there. I liked how serious and yet still kind of modernized it a little bit. Feeling a, yeah, let's say right about here Oops. for JP's theme. Next track, Zangief's theme, Red, R-E-D. Okay, this was from his trailer. You see, that riff right there would be one, right? <laughs> That's a riff there that I thought would have been in like E-Honda's theme song. It probably was in there, it's just, I probably talked over it or I might've missed it, but anything with like just snare drums just going crazy. I imagine just someone slapping someone, like sumo slapping. Yeah, I remember this. I actually loved it when I first heard it. Freaking symphonic freaking dubstep. <laughs> that little sample of the strings right there is actually kind of cool. Yeah, hold up. Oh, I like that. Hey, freaking oh, the snares are going though. Aha, uh -huh, nice. I like that. Dun, dun. <laughs> dun. Oh, I thought it was coming again. <laughs> There it is. Nice little variety of instruments here. Ooh. If there's something this soundtrack has going on when it comes to like the character themes, it's these breakdowns. Like all of them are actually pretty interesting. Okay. That one was all right. Oh, wait a minute. I like that riff better than the other one. You see that right there was what I was expecting like from JP, like that little freaking dramatic cinematic movie trailer like freaking vest. But I mean, it makes sense for Geef. This big oversized refrigerator of a human being just coming at you. Oh, what is this? I like that roof. I think this is the actual breakdown. Man, these riffs in the last part, like, I think I'm really starting to like 
the freaking like late game portions of the theme songs. Yeah, I think I'm starting to like the freaking late game, like final round portions, whatever it's meant to be. I know it's meant to basically like kick in during like a late part of like the game, like, you know, when the match has been going on for a while. I think it's like a final round type of thing, but those particular portions of these songs are some of my favorites, like just the way they take it there. I guess maybe it's because it's something that I'm not really used to with Street Fighter music. Again, I remember Zangief's theme from his trailer, or at least like the trailer that featured him and the last two characters that we're gonna go over. And I remember liking that song when I first heard it, but now that I hear the entire thing, it's actually, that mess is insane. That is actually really insane. As a matter of fact, I'll put it up here. It's one of the bangers right here. Put it like right here. Next track, Lily's theme, Diosa del Sol. It's got the flavor that I expected, I give you that. Not to mention also it has the mood and the tone and the feel that I'd imagine it would have. Kind of cutesy, it's kind of bouncy and it's kind of upbeat, very much like Lily is. <laughs> That one, little, that one little lick right there is kind of funny. This is kind of funny to me. Uh, so compared to a lot of the other theme songs, this is kind of laid back. Again, makes sense. It is Lily after all. From what we've seen of her, she's very peaceful and very chill. Plus that little lick there, I keep poking on that. It makes sense because we have seen like Lily has shown that, at least like with that one version of the Mexican Typhoon where she's a little clumsy. Like I said, it's something befitting of a character like this. Whoa, what's this? Okay. This is kind of mellow. Ah, and there's that little bit of urgency right there. Okay, it's picking it up a little bit now. Something else that's very danceable. Oh, here it is again. I'm sorry, I keep poking fun at that. Hey, killed it with these drums though. I'll still with that. Hmm. But yeah, that was pretty good. Again, it's what I expected there. It actually fits Lily in more ways than just one, not just because of her nationality, but also it's a thing that I could imagine being linked to a very chipper, cutesy, kind of bubbly, moe type of character in that case. Eh, like I said, it's good. I'll put it right here. Oops. Ah, last character theme. It's the last character theme and it's Cammy Cam, Over Trip. No. Oh, okay, I remember this. From the um it's from the freaking trailer. Why is it that freaking Cammy basically like so far has the most serious sounding theme of everybody in here so far? And when I mean serious, I mean like it's like dark and like just Like right now, I could just imagine like Cammy like sneaking in some place and like freaking darting through and beating up a bunch of dudes or something. Okay, got some synth going on there. It's a little danceable too. Like this theme song, like it sounds like somebody who would literally kill you. And I mean, seeing that freaking, <laughs> Seeing the little throwback to the Street Fighter movie, like in the trailer, you remember she hit, she hit freaking JP with that mess, she'll probably do it. <laughs> These freaking dark techno riffs are just hitting, man. 
Like, I don't know if I'm reading into this wrong, but this sounds sinister. And I know, like, Cammy is, like, kind of edgy or whatnot, but still, this sounds sinister. Uh-oh. Little hints of like her old theme song, I can kind of hear it, or at least it made me think about it. Whoo! The very last character theme that we got to rank right here, and that right there is a banger right here. <laughs> But that's all I got for this one. How would you rank the character themes? Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I am Chrysalid signing off. Thank you again, Landon, for the recommendation. I enjoyed putting this together just as much as I hope you and others enjoy watching it. Y'all take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. Be cool to each other. Stay hydrated. See ya.